that lays hidden from the American consumers and from the lawmakers who represent them, that maybe something is, is something we should look at. Thank you. Senator Vance, I can't think of when I was mad at you. So, uh, Senator Menendez is recognized from New Jersey. Uh, overdraft fees are borne almost exclusively by those who can least afford them. A 2021 report by the Financial Health Network found that nearly 60% of all overdraft fees in 2020 were paid by low and moderate income households, and about 25% were paid by Latino households specifically. Some banks have either decreased or eliminated overdraft fees altogether, in large part due to increased scrutiny and oversight. But a recent report from California state regulators showed some credit unions took in $252 million in overdraft and non-sufficient fund fees in 2022. 30 of the credit unions in the report earned half or more of their net profit just from overdraft and NSF fees. Uh, Ms. Osaka, can you commit to looking into this and seeing if there needs to be more oversight of certain credit unions whose profitability is overly reliant on overdraft fees? Yes, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, I think consumer protection is absolutely important and making sure financial services are affordable is critical. Um, and so if confirmed, yes, I am um, committed to looking more into this issue um, and following up with you in your office. Thank you. Uh, overdraft fees are a major reason why so many Americans are still hesitant to enter the formal financial system. And I hope the NCUA will be closely monitoring this issue and ensure more is done. Two years ago, the SEC's Asset Management Advisory Committee unanimously submitted four recommendations for actions the SEC could take to improve diversity in the asset management industry. Since your confirmation when you said that you support holding a vote on these recommendations, the SEC has adopted two of the recommendations in the form of staff guidance, but has not taken action on the other two. Uh, Mr. Uida, uh, can you commit to advocating for a vote on the other two recommendations, particularly the requirement for enhanced disclosures by investment companies and advisors regarding diversity within their workforces and leadership? Uh, Senator Menendez, uh, yes, I commit to advocating consideration of those two remaining issues. It's statutorily required. The agenda, though, is set by a uh, chair counselor. Uh, to decide what goes on uh, for consideration by the commission. But uh, as someone in my staff role at the SEC work very closely with the Asset Management Advisory Committee, I do take their recommendations uh, very seriously. I appreciate that the chairman ultimately will set the agenda, but he very often will turn to his fellow commissioners for votes on a variety of things. And if his fellow commissioners are advocating for a vote at least, on these issues, I think uh, we may see the light of it. So I hope you'll be an active participant in urging uh, a vote. Uh, these are non-controversial recommendations that I think the commission should have acted on a long time ago. I've raised this issue with Chair Gensler repeatedly. I intend to keep raising it with nominees to the SEC until we see action taken. So I look forward to seeing your um, effort in that regard. Congressman Bacchus, uh, good to see you. In previous years, Exum's competitiveness report has included information about the percentage of Exum's direct small business support that went to minority and women-owned businesses. However, this information was not included in the most recent report. When Congress reauthorized the Exum Bank in 2019, we specifically included language to encourage the participation of minority and women-owned businesses in international commerce to make the bank more accessible to these businesses. It's important that Exum continue to report to Congress on how well it's accomplishing that part of its mission. So if confirmed, will you commit to ensure Exum's future competitiveness reports includes robust data regarding the bank's support for minority and women-owned businesses? That report, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, and I'll also uh, go a step further and find out why that information was not in the last report. I appreciate that. Finally, Ms. Fain, uh, the FDIC's latest OMDW, OMWI report shows that Hispanic representation, both in the overall workforce and in management, remains unacceptably low. Little signs of progress. Less than 5% of the FDIC's workforce is Hispanic or Latino, virtually unchanged 
from 2021. I've heard time and time again from Chair Gruenberg that, uh, uh, and other FDIC uh, nominees that this is a priority, but actions speak louder than words. If confirmed, will you commit to conducting a review of FDIC's policies and strategies regarding increasing Hispanic representation in the agency? Uh, certainly, Senator, and thank you for the question. Um, if confirmed, I'm certainly interested in understanding the implementation of the of FDIC's policies towards its its consumers. I, I hope not only to its consumers, but to its actually creating a diversity a diverse workforce that represents its consumers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator. That is Senator Brett from Alabama is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you.